There are a couple modifications that we can do with the world's greatest hip flexor stretch. If you notice that you have an excessive lumbar curve or otherwise called as lordosis, what you wanna do is not use any towels or equipment for this. If you notice that you have a flat back or a posterior pelvic tilt, you are gonna wanna use towels for this. So I'll cue you with what those towels look like a little later on, but first let's get into this position. So we're gonna start off with one leg over a chair and one leg is gonna be straight out on the ground. The leg that is straight on the ground for the best results is going to be flat up against the wall. And when this leg is straight up against the wall, I want you to slightly rotate the foot in so the outer edge of the foot is pointed straight up towards the ceiling because I don't want any rotation in the leg that is straight out on the ground. Now, she has a little bit of an excessive curve in the lower back, which is why we are not using any modifications or any towels for this. But if you notice that you have a flat lower back position and we wanna reestablish the curve in your lower back, what you're gonna wanna do is take a bath towel, two of them to be specific, and you're gonna roll up these bath towels just enough to create a little bit of uh, what you could wrap your hand around. And one of these towels is gonna go right underneath your belly button where your lower back is. And the other towel is gonna go right underneath your neck. Think of these as almost like a lumbar support. So as the hip flexor length is reestablished, you are also supporting the lower back and the cervical neck. Honestly, regardless if you have a really arched lower back or a flat lower back, I recommend you try this position in both variations, maybe a couple times without towels like this, and then also maybe a couple times with the towel underneath your belly button and underneath your upper neck so you can get a sense of what just helps you feel better. There's no right or wrong way to do that. I'm gonna start my timer now, and to be in this position fully, we're gonna have the leg that is propped up over a chair is at a 90 degree bend, and the hip is also at a 90 degree bend too. So this entire left leg is being held up by the chair, the pelvis is relatively neutral, and the straight leg is straight out with the foot pointing straight up towards the wall. Now, we're gonna be here anywhere from 15 to maybe 30 minutes per side depending on how long it takes your hip flexor to release. Well, here's how you can know if your hip flexor has released or not. If you were to tighten the quad, so the thigh muscle on the straight leg, when you squeeze that thigh muscle tight, you should notice that the contraction is right in the middle of the quad. When it is, this tells me that the hip is in a beautiful position, there is no rotation at the hip joint, and the hip flexor has returned to its proper resting length. If you squeeze your quad and you notice the contraction in your knee, in the kneecap, or if you notice the contraction in your back or your pelvis moves or your shoulder tightens, that tells us that the hip has not released yet. So what I want you to do is squeeze that thigh muscle tight right now and just see and get a sense of wherever in your body you feel that contraction on the straight leg. We're going to go ahead and set a timer for five minutes, and in five minutes from now, we're going to squeeze that quad muscle again and see if that position of the contraction has changed for you. We're hoping that it will, but if the hip flexor is really tight, it might feel the same for your first five minute check-in.
All right, that was five minutes resting this position. Now we're gonna do our second quad test. The first one was at the start of this exercise. So go ahead and contract your right thigh muscle tight and observe where that contraction is. If you felt it change at all, wonderful. This means that the hip flexor is starting to respond. We're starting to take rotation out of the hip and the muscles are returning to their proper resting position. If you find that the contraction was in the same spot, maybe it was the kneecap or the lower back, it's okay. It means we haven't gotten the hip flexor to respond yet. So we're gonna stay here for more time. I'll see you again in five minutes where we're gonna do our third quad test check.
Okay, now it's time for your third quad test. So go ahead and, as always, contract the quad of the right thigh and observe where that contraction is. Now, this is the third test, which means you're 10 minutes in. I recommend we at least go, regardless if that contraction felt, where you felt it change or not, I recommend us going another five minutes. So from this point on, we're gonna do five more minutes on the clock, and I'll see you for the fourth and hopefully final quad test check.
Okay, it's time for our fourth quad test check. So go ahead and give your right leg quad another contraction and determine where that contraction is. Usually it'll take about 15 minutes if you have a tight hip flexor for the contraction to start moving into the middle of the quad. If you find that it's moved into the middle of the quad, great, you're done on this side. We're gonna give the other side the same amount of time. If you notice that it's still towards the knee or it's still up in the lower back, that tells us that we got some work to do. You can of course continue to hold this position for anywhere from 15 more minutes up, doing that quad test every five minutes to see how long it takes for the hip flexor to release. Or you can just call it a day and just do this again tomorrow and again tomorrow. And eventually that hip flexor will learn how to release on time. So that being said, let's go ahead and transition and move into the other side. Now, when we started off with the other side, the intent was to release the right hip flexor. So tomorrow, you're gonna start with the right leg up on the chair, and we're gonna try to release your left hip flexor first, because we don't wanna always release the right first and then release the left second. We wanna alternate every other day with which one we're asking to release first. That way we can really aim to achieve as balanced of approach as possible. So you're at the start on the left leg. We're gonna do the quad test again. Go ahead and squeeze the front left thigh muscle. Observe where that contraction is and just make a mental note. It's either in the exact same place and you felt it in the same way as the other side or it's an entirely different experience. Regardless of whatever your experience is, make a mental note of that and we're gonna observe how that changes over time the more consistent you ask both hip flexors to finally be restored to their proper resting position. I'm gonna put five minutes on the clock and I'll see you in five minutes for our next quad test.
Okay, it's been five minutes. We're gonna do your second quad test. So go ahead and contract the muscles in the front left thigh and observe if that contraction changed and if it did, how did that change? Remember, we're looking for that contraction to be right in the middle of the quad. So hopefully we started to get some change. If not, that's okay, we got 10 more minutes here. So I'm gonna put another five minutes on the clock and I'll see you in five.
It's time for our third quad check. So tighten the muscles in the front left thigh and determine if that left hip is starting to restore its proper length again. We're looking for that contraction to be right in the middle of the quad. You might notice that one side actually releases faster than the other. You might notice that one side is a lot more stubborn and you might have to do 15, 20, 30 minutes on one side. If that's the case, you want to try to spend equal time on both sides. If one hip takes 30 minutes to release and the other hip only takes five minutes to release, we still want both sides to be 30 minutes. Otherwise, an imbalanced approach will give us an imbalanced outcome. So you really want to kind of time this to whichever leg takes the longest, and you'll only know that by doing it and doing it and doing it until you have a more intimate understanding with what your hips, pelvis, and spine are able to do. So I'm going to put five more minutes on the clock, and I'll see you for a fourth and final quad test.
All right, we're 15 minutes in. This is your final quad test, unless you need more time here. So go ahead and contract your left thigh. Ideally, we want that contraction to be the middle of the thigh, but you're just gonna take a look to see where that is for you. And you either need more time here or you feel it in the mid thigh and we can move on to the next exercise. 